Hello, my name is Christy Minton and I'll be talking about the holiday collection project I undertook during my PFE experience at the Shrewsbury Public Library. This is a product-oriented presentation. I began my PFE in mid-May in the children's room of the library. The Shrewsbury Public Library is about to move to a temporary location for two years, while the old library, shown in this picture, is renovated and greatly expanded. Shrewsbury is a diverse community. The town's population is around 35,000, and they have a large Asian population that heavily uses the library. Much of the programming is geared towards these specific groups. Throughout my experience, I was able to meet the educational objectives outlined in my PFE. Through reference services, I kept the principles and values of the profession in mind as I helped patrons. I also approached the holiday collection project from a multicultural perspective, so the final product represented the library's community. LSE 504 proved very useful to me as I met educational objective number five. I was able to connect users to the information they were looking for and provided readers advisory, following the concepts I learned in my reference course. I also met the objectives by creating programming and of course the holiday collection project, designing resources that improved user services. My site supervisor presented the holiday collection project as something she would like me to assess and reorganize. The goal was to organize the holiday books in a way that makes them easier to find by patrons. The 1,000 children's holiday books are in the back of the adult nonfiction department. It is hardly accessible to people browsing the children's room. The collection was highly unorganized. How it is laid out is each of the 24 holidays had their own sections made up of books about that holiday. Most of these books were picture books, others easy readers, some board books, and the occasional nonfiction title. No staff member was put in charge of the collection, so the decisions that were made for the items put there depended on the staff member working that day. Here is a pie chart of the 24 holidays. As you can see, Christmas, Thanksgiving, and Halloween have the most titles. The numbers to the side of the pie do not reflect the number of books in each section. They are just to show the proportion of books from one holiday to the next. Here is a list of problems with the old collection. As was mentioned, not all holiday books from major categories were included. Some of the issues that we had to consider moving forward with the project were the types of books that we wanted to move to the collection. What about religious books? Would it make people uncomfortable to see religious titles mixed into the Christmas or Easter category when they don't practice Christianity? What about other cultures' religious and non-religious holidays? Which ones should be added that most reflect Shrewsbury's population? Should holiday cookbooks, craft books, and poem books be added? These issues arose throughout the project, and I was really surprised at how much thought goes into small decisions when organizing and changing records in the catalog. Here is the process I followed. The first step was creating Holiday Lists in Evergreen, a tool that allows you to save titles you've searched in the collection so you can reference them later. Next, next I changed the 300, 394 nonfiction titles, along with picture books and easy readers, to the holiday location. As we moved forward with the project, we decided to add the religious titles to the section as well. To assist patrons looking for more information on specific religious holidays, I would create guides to point them to additional titles that had information on them. I then added cookbooks, craft books, and gave the holiday juvenile chapter books fine label stickers. Finally, I created guides for the staff so they will know how to change materials that belong in the holiday section as new titles come in, items are found, and others are returned to the library. So to start, I searched for each holiday in the Shrewsbury's catalog and added all the titles to their specific holiday lists that we might want to change to the holiday shelf location. If you take a closer look at this picture, you can see the shelving location in the record. It says Juvenile Holiday. It's a simple change in the catalog, but assessing which books should be added, organizing and finding them, then labeling them was the most time consuming part. I started with the 24 original holidays that were already represented in the collection, putting the titles that match the holidays in each list. Here is a screenshot of the, some of the lists in Evergreen. As I mentioned, saving the books records in the lists helped me stay organized as decisions were made about what was going to be changed in the holiday collection. 
By the time the project was complete, there were 34 holidays represented in the holiday collection. Each list had anywhere from a few titles to 50 or more. When you click on the list in the catalog, you see a link to the book's record and some basic information about the book. I mainly view the list to look at the book's call numbers, which are right there. The reason we added holiday books from the 394s to the holiday collection is because they see little circulation in their current spot. For parents with young children looking for books, many aren't going to look at the catalog to find books, write down call numbers, and search for titles that may or may not be there. By putting all the holiday books together, it is a one-stop shop for parents to go to find a plethora of different types of information on various holidays. I changed these books' records in the catalog and gave them a holiday and specific holiday sticker. Using the same logic I did with the other nonfiction titles, we decided to add the religious holiday books to the collection. Because the section now represents all the major holidays that are celebrated in the community, we feel the collection is now equitable. Some of the titles I came across in the religious sections cover two holidays at once. Because I couldn't choose which holiday trumped the other, these titles remained in their original location. There were also additional titles that had information about these holidays, but weren't specifically about the holiday. For the Jewish, Hindu, and Muslim holidays, I created guides for patrons so they can find these materials in the general location without having to look them up in the catalog. They will also be able to easily see that the library has more information on the holidays when their holiday section has few titles or is empty. So here is a picture of the Hindu holiday guide I created. These are just the first pages. And here are the other two guides. The first is the Jewish holiday guide and the second, the Islamic Holiday Guide. On my third to last day at the PAP site, my supervisor made the decision to add the cookbooks, craft books, etc. to the holiday section. Although the collection has grown by many titles since I started, patrons will be able to turn to the holiday collection and find many types of books about the holiday in the same place without having to scour the catalog as I did originally. Organizing by subject, by holiday in this case, increases searchability and improves user services. I created this bar graph to show the proportions of types of books in the holiday collection once I was done adding books to the section. The section is still primarily made up of picture books. Many new nonfiction titles were added as well. I added more than 400 books to the collection. Though that may not seem like a lot, the organizational aspect of the project kept me busy throughout my PAB experience. The problem with adding holiday chapter books to the holiday collection is they are often part of a very popular series. Children do not, not seem to care that the book is set at Christmas time. They will read it in July if they love the series. It would be too difficult for the children to find the, their series books if they were moved to the holiday location. All I did was give these books specific holiday stickers and they remained the same in the catalog. As was mentioned, many of the books that needed to be changed were either checked out or I couldn't find them in the children's room. I left behind guides for the staff that let them know the titles that were in the library somewhere that needed to be changed, those titles that are checked out that needed to be changed when they were returned, along with directions on how to do that. Now staff will be aware of the project, keep their eyes open for the missing titles, change them when they are found, and know which books need to be added to the holiday collection when new books are purchased. This is an example of one of the guides. You can see some titles are highlighted. The titles I highlighted are those books I put on hold so the staff will know these need to be changed as they are returned. This guide goes on for pages and pages. I created the list of holidays in the holiday collection now. It is a tool that everyone can use to see which holidays are represented in the collection. It is much more reflective of Shrewsbury's unique community, community than it had been. And finally, here are the references for the information and pictures I used in the presentation.